The latest episode of the HBO original 30 Coins just dropped with El Doble, or The Double. This one might just be the craziest episode yet. This will have some spoilers for the previous episodes, just as a warning, but I'm going to do my best to avoid any spoilers for this episode. You can also check out my reviews on episodes one through four. If you haven't seen them, I've linked them in the description below. In episode four, we get a good amount of backstory on Father Vergara. We see him at seminary and with his two friends, Santoro and Sandro, and they don't totally see eye to eye theologically. And we also learn that Santoro has been keeping a devil, or maybe the devil, captive in order to learn from him. Santoro is then offered the chance at full knowledge from the devil by walking through a door, and he takes that opportunity, and then he disappears. Santoro is the one that we have been seeing in the visions and even at the head of the table in the mirror episode, and he's the one who is searching for the coins. Father Vergara travels to Rome to meet with the Pope to warn him about the group who is searching for the coins. And while it was a little predictable, the Pope tells Vergara that there's only one person he trusts with this information, and in walks Santoro. Dun, dun, dun. Also at the end of the episode, Elena is getting ready to go to Paris with Roque when she finds out that her husband has reappeared. And what we know that she doesn't is he came back to life in the middle of a field from a scarecrow as some old lady chanted and poured stuff on the ground. So episode five, El Doble or The Double is just crazy. The opening scene brings us more of Vergara as a kid, but from there it goes sideways. Now this episode went by quickly. The tension is high and there's a lot of intensity to just about every scene. Vergara is still in Rome, Elena is at home with her husband, and Paco is kind of just moping through the town. There's so much religious imagery on display here. Not that there hasn't been that influence all along, especially given the context of the show, but this episode really ramps it up. There is mythology that is piled on in addition to the symbols that we see. At one point we see priests that are wearing all white with a black collar, which is direct inverse of how we normally see them. There's also a symbol of an upside down cross sort of thing, and their whole appearance is like a direct opposite of regular priests. And do they believe the exact opposite? I don't know yet. Plus there's a few scenes in a museum where all kinds of religious artifacts are on display. And I found it interesting that the exhibit surrounds the church during World War II, where we get glimpses of the Nazis and their pursuit of religious pieces and the thought that certain pieces contain supernatural powers. And now you compare that to the fact that we have another group pursuing something very similar. I just like the parallel the show set up without having to spell it out. While these zealots are intriguing, the real interest comes from Santoro. He gives us more insight into what's going on in the larger story, which is good. I've been enjoying the chase so far, but have been wanting more and more meat to what the end goal is, aside from the vague powerful weapon that supposedly comes with the possession of all 30 of Judas's coins. Meanwhile, back in the town, Elena is reconnecting with her husband, and like in many small towns, they are the center of gossip. And there's this conversation that happens at the bar between several of the townspeople, and it's pretty enlightening, and it's also amusing, but also not everybody is excited that Elena's husband has returned. I mean, Paco is visibly upset. Even though he's married and has never acted on anything towards Elena, there have been a lot of instances where we see that it looks like he wishes there was more. So he's moody and he stomps around a bit. But in this episode, Paco doesn't have too much screen time but he is still present for some very critical moments. There's also another who isn't thrilled that Elena's husband is back. Jesus is visibly agitated at the news, so that adds some real excitement to the drama. And there's still not much info on the creepy old woman who was in the field when the husband came back to life, you know, from the scarecrow, but we do see more of her. So what are her motivations? What does she stand to benefit from all of this? And regardless of those answers, she's integral to some moments, and I'm curious to see how it all works towards the overall climax of the show. There are several times in this episode where the dialogue goes sideways. And I'm not saying that in a bad way, it's just conversations are happening, and I'm trucking along with them, and then boom, it takes a hard left that I wasn't expecting. And I enjoyed it when it did it because that unexpected turn, it was refreshing. It kept me on my toes and just really made sure that I was totally paying attention. And as is becoming usual, there is some craziness in situations that surround Vergara. And there are some genuinely cool moments where we get to see a glimpse into what's to come. What, what all this is working towards and what the coins themselves can do. The show also employs some special effects in this episode and they're actually not too bad. I like that when they're used, they're not hidden in darkness. 
and now they're not flawless effects, but I appreciated them and the imagination that went into how they're utilized. And it made for a very exciting chain of events too. Now this being episode five, we've only got three left and I have a feeling a pretty big climax is building. And based on something that we see in this episode, there should be a powerful showdown brewing. And I don't know if I've said this before, but elements of this show remind me of Dan Brown novels, the search for religious artifacts that will bring power to those that possess them, but also the unveiling of new religious secrets that could cause massive ripples through organized religion. How much is true? How much is conjecture creating fictionalized content that rides the line of plausibility? And regardless, it's exciting and creates a really good atmosphere for the story and the world that they're building as a whole. It's always fun when there are shadowy forces at work to undermine the establishment, because then we get to have heroes that fight those forces. And typically they're not nearly as flawed as Vergara, Elena, and Paco, but that's also what makes them more endearing and relatable. They feel more like real people than larger than life personas only created for a TV show. Each of the episodes tackles themes and sometimes they're overlapping. This episode is looking a lot at deception and temptation. And really these have been present in just about every episode, but I I think in this one, they become more clear. Each of our characters are faced with temptations in various forms. And how do they handle it? Are they able to withstand the temptation or do they give in? And depending on their choice, it's going to have massive ramifications for what's to come. And the same goes for deception. There's so much deception that occurs within the show and within this episode. Some is used in unexpected ways while others are straightforward. In one instance, I'm curious to see how those causing deception are being deceived themselves and how it came to be. Does that make any sense? I, I know what I was trying to convey, but be vague at the same time. Mm. Okay, well, anyways, episode five is a fun ride. There's a lot of excitement, some crazy imagery, and a good continuous building of the story. There's still some jerky moments to the storytelling and the editing, but that has been a consistent thing all the way through, so I'm now believing it's more of the director's style than anything. I mean, if it were inconsistent in that venue, I'd be, it'd be bothersome, and it would be more of a flaw than a style. I can't wait for next week to see what comes next. There is sex, nudity, profanity, and some brutal and gory violence. I give episode 5 of 30 coins, 4 out of 5 couches. So how are you liking the series so far? What have been some of your favorite moments from the first five episodes? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this review, please give it a like. Also, don't forget to share and subscribe. I'm Chris. This is Movies and Munchies. Thanks for catching with me.